Hey everyone, uh, we will be coming up with a great hour for you. Uh, Les uh, is here and ready to go. We're going to talk about the Buick Wildcat. There's a name that's uh, not been used in a while, Les, and they've they've got yeah. a very cool car coming up. Always, uh, uh, always like that name. That and the Riviera, they were great names for Buicks. They got to bring that back, the Riviera, don't you think? Yeah, yeah, they should. Yeah. Well, they did in the eighties. Yeah, didn't they? Yeah. And then, uh, this is interesting, <laughs> I don't know how to explain this, but we thought we were getting a brand new Subaru Crosstrek with a new interior, revised exterior, but this week Subaru revealed the Crosstrek for 2023, and it basically has different, a couple of different trims and a little updates here and there, no Crosstrek Wilderness uh, so it's going to be interesting to see what they do here, uh, and when the all new model comes out, I guess it will be a 2024. I was expecting something completely new. I was like, wow, look at that. Yeah. I wonder, wonder why they call it that. I mean, they know it's not, mm, I don't know. Or maybe they're saying that enough parts have been, you know, rebuilt. No, it, re it's the same car inside, and yeah, we'll t we'll talk about it. And then yeah. uh, hmm. we're going to talk about Polestar. Polestar will be available from Hertz as part of their Dream Fleet. Uh, this is the Polestar Two, good-looking, clean car, all electric. We'll talk about that. What do you suppose that'll cost uh, per day? <laughs> I don't know. 500? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, so we'll talk about that, and I'll have an at-the-wheel review of the K5, another great car, uh, for the vehicle formerly known as Optima from Kia. So stay tuned. Aha. Uh -huh. This is Cruise Control. Control. Your on-air automotive magazine with co-hosts Fred Staub and Les Cruise Jackson. Control. Everything you need to know about new and used cars. Control. Industry news. We'll fix or repair your car on the air. air. Fasten your seatbelts and let us take the wheel. Now, your ride is about to begin Control. because you're on Cruise Control. Cruise Control. Cruise Control. Yes, in. Hey, hello, everyone. Welcome to Cruise Control, your on-air automotive magazine. As usual, we're live. I'm Les Jackson. The other guy in that other seat is Fred Staub. We have come armed with uh, so many stories, so many things going on in the industry. Uh, we're going to do our best to get to all of them. But in fact, why don't we start right now? Yeah, go for it, Les. Okay, well, uh, one of the things going on is the uh, is the Buick Wildcat. Uh, that is to say, it's an it's an old story, uh, old name, great name for models that Buick made. They've revived it. Uh, they put it in a really cool looking new concept, and uh, we'll tell you everything we know about it, which isn't everything. But <laughs> boy, is it is it. <laughs> You can't not notice it. Yeah, it's almost like a little Aston Martin-ish or something. Yeah, I, uh, I, yeah, you're right. I think that's cool. And then um, this is interesting, a very popular vehicle. We thought the uh, Subaru Crosstrek was going to get a complete remake for 2023. New interior, new exterior. But really, it's just a light refresh. So we're not quite hmm. sure what goes on there, but we'll tell you about it. And we'll have some pricing, Les Jackson. Yeah, it's kind of like detergents and uh, <laughs> and colas, you know, all new. Well, what makes it new? Well, we put that all new written on the label. Uh, Honda, by the way, says its new HRV has more power. But a lot of people have been asking for more power in that, and they say you got it. Yeah, that's a that's a true thing. I have a friend that has one, and she said, "Gee, I feel feel like I'm not getting enough power out of this thing." Yeah. And then Hertz has teamed up with Polestar. They're going to make Polestars available, of course. It is the uh, performance uh, division of Volvo, all electric. And uh, they're going to have the Polestar 2 in the fleet. Plus, they're also going to reveal the Polestar 3, which is a bit of an SUV. So we'll talk about that. 
That's right. Hertz, I, I just checked with Hertz. They said if you want to rent a Polestar, uh, you have to come with your your uh, investment portfolio. <laughs> uh, so, so it will be expensive. Anyway, talking tech, which, you know, we love to do. Toyota has passenger safety on its radar. Yeah, we'll explain that one for sure. Yep. And uh, also, I'm going to have an at-the-wheel review of the Kia K5 GT line. This is the vehicle formerly known as the Optima. Yes, it's a sedan. We keep Great reviewing car. sedans. Love them. Manufacturers keep putting them out, and we'll tell you all about that. It was a really fun car. All that and more when we get rolling on this edition of Cruise Control. That's a lot to get rolling with, so we're going to get started right after the break. Don't forget to check us out at CruiseControlRadio.com. Like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter. Check out our YouTube page and more. Fred Staub, Les Jackson. We'll be right back. Control. And welcome back to Cruise Control, your on-air automotive magazine. I'm Fred Staub. The other guy is Les Jackson. We're glad you're with us because mm -hmm. we love telling you about this stuff. And we've got stuff to talk about, including the return of the Buick Wildcat. You and I were talking during the break. Was the Wildcat a car at one point, a version of a car, or was it an engine? It was actually both. Um, they made the Wildcat in the 60s for a few years as a model. Okay. Obviously, their muscle car model. But the engines, um, if they put, you know, a, a Wildcat engine in another Buick, it actually on the air cleaner said Wildcat V8. I kind of remember my dad had a Electra 1960 with a 425 Wildcat. I may be misremembering, but I do remember that name. And this car, man, it's pretty stunning, isn't it? It's all electric. It really is. It It is. I mean, it's gorgeous. Yeah. It, it is their EV concept. It is only a concept, but they're saying well, this will be the future look of Buick. And if you look at it, we talked about this a lot on cruise control. The cars, and by the way, this is an actual two door, an actual two door. Wow. <laughs> so, wow. Um, but you look at them, they are sort of like short rear deck, long hood, big mm -hmm. rear glass. Um, I don't side know. Side mirrors. So, yeah, it does have very thin side mirrors. Well, it's probably cameras. Probably cameras. Got the new Buick logo. And uh, you've got to have like fancy dancy uh, light show, I guess, an electric car. Yep. <laughs> it has yep. the name plate that that pops up, which I think is kind of cool. Uh, and Buick says, uh, you know, right now they're basically SUV, but they want to get back into the car business with this gorgeous electric car. Definitely some Aston Martin up front, I think. That's um. It's going to be a high-end car. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and some of the cues include distinctive semi-swing doors. Now, I don't think they actually opened them, so I don't quite know what that means, semi-swing doors. Do you? Hmm. Does uh, that mean it comes out a little bit and then folds up? Maybe, or maybe. Like a Lamborghini? I, I don't know. I kind of thought that too. Unique aluminum trim that appears to flow seamlessly into the interior seat structures. Micro LED lighting technology. Blade style tail lights embedded cool. into the roof sail panels, culminating in a checkmark horizontal lamp. An external state of charge indicator visible. In the exterior hatch, I guess you showed that's interesting. Off, yeah, and Jet Age inspired eighteen inch spoke turbine wheels. Eighteen spoke turbine wheels are bigger than they 18 look like. Inch. They they really do look like jet engine turbine blades. They do, they do, uh, and that was all the rage: the Jet Age, the rockets. Right? Oh, it was, yeah. yeah. So uh, it's a two plus two configuration. So. So four seats, four individual seats, and uh, very, very futuristic and cool. I think it's a great concept. 
Uh, what will uh, will we see this? Do you think they will dare build a real two seat, a uh, four seat, two door car? Les, what do you think? Um, you know, that's will they build a Wildcat? Yes. Will it be a, a two door car? That's a interesting question. Um, I think. I think it'll probably be like a one of the Mazda RX eights mm-hmm. were, mm-hmm. where they'll they'll give in to rear doors, yeah, of some kind. Yeah, interesting, interesting. Uh, I love the the uh, illuminated. Um, I like it. I think <laughs> I'd love to drive that thing. Yeah, just build it like that. Of course, this is years off, but. C- certainly Buick needs some excitement, don't you think? They in, do. In their they lineup. They, they, you know, they they make a, a good solid range of all SUVs. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and they need some pizzazz. Yeah. And I think the Wildcat is, might just be the key to p- providing some pizzazz for sure. Um, and keep in mind too, Buick does very well in uh, China. So, they yep. they may be very well designing this for China. Uh, this is a little bit of a head scratcher. Now maybe we all got ahead of it, and and really we should have just been listening to Subaru, not from the people with uh, various websites around the uh, web saying that we're going to get an all new Subaru and uh, Crosstrek in 2023. But uh, we kind of got one that was just uh, updated. We'll tell you about the pricing and what's new for 2023 when we come back on Cruise Control. Cruise Control. And welcome back to Cruise Control. Uh, Lesson Fred here. We uh, started to talk about the new uh, 2023 Subaru Crosstrek uh, new-ish. <laughs> well, well, here's, so, here's the it's deal. Not, here's the it's deal. It's not all new, but it's new. Uh, they're not calling it all new. What happened was the internet was awash with rumors, uh-huh. uh, renderings of a vehicle that had a new front and rear fascias. Okay. And more importantly, too, had a new interior that was similar to the WRX with a big screen in the center, which they've kind of been integrating into all of their lineups. And the thought was, this is the 2023 um, Subaru Crosstrek. Now, this week, they announced pricing on the 2023 Subaru Crosstrek. And guess what? It looks very much like the 2022 version. Yeah. So, yeah. So whatever the new version is, it'll probably be out next year. Yeah. I mean, the newest uh, thing on this is a special edition desert khaki exterior color. Right. But it is, you know, we don't want to confuse people. It's a 2023. It is new. Right. <laughs> they didn't take an old car. And <laughs> call no, it, no. But, know, but, 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 but it's just not a from the fresh piece of paper right new. a lot of people are waiting for the subaru cross trek wilderness edition they have the wilderness forester they have the wilderness outback which i reviewed not that long ago and that was going to be part of the new model and all that but, right but this is basically a carryover with just the special edition in the desert khaki color uh, i believe they get a price increase across the board um they uh, they do have the hybrid. The hybrid's been brought back, which gets an EPA rated 35 mpg and 90 mpge with a 480 total range mile range. Um, it still has all the great things like uh, like eyesight. Although I, it's interesting, you can't get the eyesight twin camera safety system if you get a manual. Although that might be well, changing too, because it has to talk. Uh, to to a transmission they they might be changing that although who knows in the next generation if manual transmissions will even make the leap so it might be you know uh moot at this point so prices have gone up a little bit no surprise um Mm. 
Yeah. They're not. There's not a lot new. This could be just a placeholder until the new model comes in. It is a great vehicle, by the way, the Crosstrek. Um, and I do like those black wheels. Uh, and um, you know it. What we're looking for, it's missing a couple of weird things. I and I don't know why this is, but it's missing dual zone climate control. You and I were discussing this. Yep. If you have an SO significant other sometimes heat and cooling levels are different typically you said your your <laughs> your cooling levels are higher as mine so, are sometimes heat and cooling levels are always different <laughs> well currently in the subaru cross trek they don't offer the dual zone but which is weird because it's offered yeah, in virtually every vehicle, and they don't offer a heated steering wheel. Which up north, I love a heated steering wheel. Well, I, would I do too. And it. and any new vehicle we ever get is going to have heated seats. That's heated. Yeah, they do come with heated seats, but yeah. no heated. We have a constitutional wheel. right to heated seats. <laughs> I don't know about that, but uh, well, I, have I like just them. Declared I like them. It. I like them. Yeah. So uh, the feeling was that the, this vehicle was going to get the interior like the WRX that we've seen across that uh, across the right. Subaru lineup. It's got the dual zone. It's got the large vertical screen um, and that there were going to be other improvements and modernizations on the outside. It didn't happen. Maybe that becomes a 2024 model. Maybe there's a, just a short run model until they get everything squared away. It could just be what happened because of parts shortages who knows right sure um you know right now the parts around the world are in a in a state of flux yeah so uh like currently this this um this has a little bit of an older eight inch multimedia plus system um that is not the same as you know what we're used to seeing in some of the other Subarus. So, um, I think. What do you think? Probably uh, half year on the twenty twenty three, and then they'll I think over we'll see at the beginning of the year they'll announce that a twenty twenty four model is going to be an all new um, design. Because why not? It's a great marketing uh, tool. Yeah, and they just weren't really ready to bring out the no. new one. But they Not are. It, it, I mean, people are people are on to it. <laughs> so there you have it. But uh, talking about other small uh, crossovers, of course, the hottest market, uh, Honda HRV. Uh, they have a brand new, larger, slightly larger HRV, more responsive powertrain, more upscale cabin. And uh, it's got a seven inch standard digital instrumentation cluster, available HD nine inch color touchscreen, new fully independent rear suspension. That is really nice when uh, when you're driving one of these to have that wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto compatibility. It's got a larger, more responsive two liter engine. This has been the knock on this vehicle. It has that it is, is just been slow. And every 2023 HRV is going to get the larger two liter four cylinder pumping out 158 horsepower compared to the one eight engine, uh, that was its predecessor, uh, that, uh, this engine, this new engine, the two liter off 17 more horsepower and 11 pound feet of torque. It is welcomed because I've driven HRVs and I thought, what's going on here? It seems really, really slow. They were, they were a little anemic. They just, they didn't feel uh, peppy. Did not feel peppy. Uh, very nice interior. Honda always does a nice job with their interior. Yep. Um, upscale, they've they've increased uh, the quality of the interior and the uh, parts and pieces. So I think, I think it looks good. It, it's definitely got a Civic, that Civic look with that uh, sort of uh, vented panel, I'll call it design panel. Um, that uh, has the air conditioner vents and a really nice integration of those. Uh, and there'll probably be, uh, I would say, a hybrid version of this as well, but we don't know about it yet. It comes in three uh, grades, LX, Sport, and EXL. 
And uh, I don't know if we have pricing on this yet. No, we don't. I don't think we do. Well, no, that we have the oh, pricing. Oh, we do have the um, pricing. Yes, we yeah. do, and it's it's actually quite nice. It's it? actually decent for the uh, even the all wheel drives only twenty five thousand uh, one fifty for the LX. Uh huh. Now I, I'm a little disappointed, I guess, uh, with the EPA mileage rating. Okay. Because. 30 to 32 on the highway is just not very much. Mm -hmm. When you think of something like that uh, Corolla Cross Hybrid that gets yeah. 37. So, yeah, it, it's just, uh, again, I wouldn't care about it if gas was, you know, 265 a, a gallon, mm -hmm. but it's five and a quarter. Yeah. And, and increasing. Uh, you're right. Yeah. The EXL top of the range. This tops out. This all-wheel drive tops out at twenty-eight thousand nine fifty MSRP with the twelve hundred and forty-five dollar destination charge thirty-one ninety-five. The numbers on that city twenty-five, highway thirty, combined twenty-seven. And yeah. you know what Not it was, great. Les? They really felt this thing was underpowered. And so probably they said, hey, we have to, even if we hurt gas economy, hey, we made it bigger and we yeah, had to put that, a bigger that's engine what they did. to get yeah, better It'll be a couple of years before that engine is refined enough to get better mileage. And you know what? They, uh, you're right. They're going to just do a hybrid. Yeah, that's the way they go. Hey, uh, when we come back, we got plenty more to go. We're going to tell you about Hertz and Polestar. We're going to talk tech. And have an at-the-wheel review. Lot to do, so stay tuned. Cruise Control. Hey, welcome back to Cruise Control. Les and Fred here. And we're off to the Hertz uh, office. <laughs> For the to dream. To rent us... <laughs> To rent us uh, something, yeah, and um, and what's cool is that they're going to be uh, teaming up with Polestar. Oh yeah, to put some of those really nice Volvo electrics uh, yeah. in their fleet, mm -hmm. and they're they're terrific vehicles. Um, I don't, I honestly don't know what vehicles are renting for these days, but. I know it's not cheap. No, we did that story, uh, I believe it was last summer, and people were renting U-Haul trucks because it was cheaper in <laughs> Hawaii to than renting a car because it was $20 a day for the U-Haul truck and like some ridiculous number for a regular car. Yeah. But yeah last time I looked was last summer, and it was for regular uh, Avis Hertz uh, rental car uh, in Minneapolis. It was $85 a day. Oh, my. Well, let's talk about this Polestar here. This is the Polestar 2. Polestar is going to begin delivering 65,000 electric vehicles to Hertz. It's going to be part of their dream fleet. And it makes sense. I mean, this is the smartest thing, even if it does cost $85 a day. If you're thinking about buying a Polestar, go rent one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And drive it around and charge it up and sit and try it out. Um Great vehicle. I think these are super clean looking vehicles, their design. Uh, of course, it is it is the kind of the performance, I guess, could, could you call it the AMG of Volvo? Uh, yeah, um, I would. Um, and and it's the following is enormous. They've they've taken 32,000 customer orders for Polestars since the beginning of the year. Wow. And that's, you know, that's an electric car. That's not just some other model. Yeah. And, um, of course, it has the Scandinavian styling that people love. Yep. And very clean looking. And um, you can get it as part of the Dream Fleet. Now, uh, coming up from the folks at Polestar uh, will be the uh, Model 3. And uh, this is going to be uh, revealed in October of 2022. And uh, I believe this is uh, their SUV. I think it is a four-seat uh, four SUV. It will be um, 
have autonomous highway piloting powered by the best in class LIDAR, and it will have NVIDIA computing power. NVIDIA is the company we know from making graphics mm-hmm. cards for your computer, but NVIDIA is getting into the automotive world. It will feature a dual motor drivetrain with large battery and a range or target of over 600 kilometers. And, uh, of course, this is their uh, little teaser film that they have for it. But uh, they plan on launching a new car every year for the next three years, keeping the name simple, 1, 2, and 3. And this is going to be their SUV. uh, I thank them for that. (laughs) Uh, By the way, uh, most people aren't aware that Volvo has been um, in the autonomous vehicle business um for quite a while they've had a fleet for almost seven years they've had a fleet of autonomous of 100 autonomous volvos traveling around the world uh, with their engineers and being tested um, constantly modified with the latest technology so they they know probably more about autonomous driving or technology than anybody That is cool stuff. Definitely cool stuff. And uh, I'm sure we'll be hearing more about Polestar uh, on uh, overall and on the cruise control, too. So we're we're glad for that. Um, But let's talk a little tech, shall we? Cabin awareness. I know you and I on our press cars, we often get a reminder or chime. Check the rear seat, right? Because people leave kids, they leave pets back there. And you don't want to do that in extremely hot weather. And Toyota has some new technology that uses radar to sense uh, what's back there. Is somebody back there? It can detect things like a heartbeat. It can detect uh, maybe a kid under a blanket uh, or somebody that's hiding, you know, in the passenger compartment of a minivan. And it uses uh, technology uh, that has been used by NASA. It uses millimeter radar to kind of sweep the passenger compartment and see if it hears you know, anything, if it encounters any movement. And then it will send you a text like, go back to your car. Hmm. Uh, somebody's in your back seat. That's... You know that's really cool. Uh, I I like this, and I bet they'll share this with other car companies. I would think so. I mean, um, it's it's really nice because it it's it's a like a foolproof right way of knowing you you know you left your dog back there right exactly. Um, and you know you think about it right now the system is very basic. All it is is a chime. You know. Just and a and a message mm-hmm. on the IP. Look at, oh, look in the back seat. You know it, it. That's it. I mean, it's up to you to look. You can ignore it, uh, and or maybe you'll look back there and you don't see anything. But like I said, somebody's under a blanket or hiding in the in the cargo compartment or something yeah. like that. Or you've put a heavy, a heavy box of carburetors on the back seat, <laughs> and and it, it senses that. So. So, so I've heard Bo- box of carburetors because <laughs> I often carry yes. a box of carburetors around. Listen, what can I tell you? Because uh, I mean, you might need them. You never know. Like in case yeah. you want to swap out that fuel injection. For and it, a the alarms, the alarm started while I was going down the interstate. So I just had to listen to it. Yeah. Oh, that's great. That's great. Yeah. I, I've, sat my uh, backpack with like a laptop in the front seat and have had to Mm -hmm. strap it in because it's flashing wildly saying passenger does not have seatbelt on. So I thought, okay, well, I'll just belt belt it in and then it's happy. But Yeah, I've done that. Good uh, technology, though, from uh, the folks at uh, Toyota. And I think we will be seeing this more often. Think you could use this for you could use this for a a, a home alarm system too. It would be one you of could. the best, wouldn't it? Yeah, it's a motion detector. And if you oh, have well. your have your vehicle sitting in a garage and a, a mouse starts to come in and chew on the wires, you would know about yeah. it right away. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's uh, talk a little bit about 
uh, we'll play pronosticator here. Now, Stellantis, uh, of course, about a year ago, announced that it's going to have four platforms, the STLA. They're all electric platforms from small to large. The large would go up to about 500 miles of range Mm -hmm. and would be for large vehicles like the Ram pickup, like uh, some of the larger Jeeps, like the Jeep Wagoneer or Grand Cherokee L. So this week they announced, Stellantis, that the Windsor Assembly Plant will produce vehicles on the new STLA large electric platform, and that's starting, retooling will start in 2024. Right now they produce things like the 300, the Dodge Charger, the Dodge Challenger, uh, and uh, it will be interesting to see what they build there. Um do you think there'll be a new 300, an electric 300, Chrysler 300? Um, I just, it's I good, don't think so. It's a good value right now if you want a traditional rear drive it is. car. Um, and they still do produce it, and they still do slight modifications to it. Uh, but uh, I don't know. Interesting story there, and we'll see. I, I think you're going to see that be the home of some of the big Jeeps and and maybe the Ram truck, yep. who, who knows, uh, when it goes goes electric. Um, so uh, also we should tell, tell you that Nissan this week announced a Z race car, their new Z. It will be powered by a special new fuel, which is a clean fuel and uh, what they call CNF, carbon neutral fuel. They don't say what it is. Could this be hmm. synthetic fuel like... Porsche and others are working on? We don't well, know. It, they're all working on it. Um, obviously, a carbon neutral fuel mm-hmm. would be <laughs> something that doesn't necessarily not have carbon, just it's carbon neutral. Mm-hmm. It would be interesting to see if yeah. they, uh, if what they've come up with here. But that's all we know. It will be a carbon neutral fuel. We don't know. What it is, it will be two cars numbered 230 and 244. Don't ask me what happened to the numbers in between. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm not sure what happened to those. So uh, interesting to see this. And, of course, racing always is the developer, you know, the field to develop this type of thing. Uh, who knows? Maybe next year at Le Mans, which is currently underway, we will see vehicles running on some kind of synthetic racing fuel. I I think that that's, that'll happen very soon. Yeah. All right. When we come back, I'm going to have an at the wheel review of the Kia K5 GT line. We'll be right back. Cruise control. And welcome back to Cruise Control, your on air automotive magazine. We've got an at the wheel review for you. Lest we call this the vehicle formerly known as the Optima, it is now known as the K5. I th- isn't the Alta, uh, the Optima a nicer name? Yeah, they uh, they went to this uh, K yeah, and lettering K5. thing. Remember, yeah. their large car uh, is known as the K9. Yeah, the K9, which, which was a very nice car. Yeah, K9. I mean, I like dogs, but, uh, you know, it doesn't quite translate. Um, no. But this is another one uh, of a vehicle, a sedan, uh, sporty, all-wheel drive, comfortable to drive, decent fuel economy. And we're going to talk about this. This is the uh, K5 GT line. Uh, it was in wolf gray, which when you see see the video in a moment, it um, it almost looks white in the picture. But it was more of a more of a wolf gray. Incredible styling by the folks at Kia. The the roof uh, kind of transitions right all the way back to this sort of a fastback roof. Great red seats on the inside GT line. Lots of detail with some black. Uh, piping and black stripes in the center of them. Um, and just a very clean looking, well-styled sedan with a lot going on for it. Now, 
the K5 replaced the Optima in 2021. It's brand new in 2021. So this is the second year for it. We're looking at a 2022 model, GT line. And uh, basically what's happened here is they put on the newer uh, Kia logos all through it and kind of refined a few things here and there. Um, Ours had the 1.6 liter GDI turbocharged engine, 180 horsepower, 195 pound-feet of torque. If you need more, you can get the 2.5 liter T engine, which has a, a pretty impressive 290 horsepower, 311 pound-feet of torque. And uh, this is the GT line, so a little bit sportier, a little, little more fun on the outside, and it is all-wheel drive. Still, uh, it turns back some pretty good numbers on mileage. 33 highway, 25 city combined for 28 miles to the gallon. That red, Those red seats really make this interior pop. If it wasn't for these red seats, it'd be kind of, uh, you know, nice, but, but dark and not really stand out. Yeah, of course, it's cool. Kia has great switch gear and and everything's got its own push button, which I love, and knob. Uh, and it had a sort of a thing where you slide your phone into the spring-loaded socket. The only problem was the automatic charging didn't start right away, even if you push the button. So that was a little bit of a problem. I don't know whether it was my phone having a case on or not, but um, great interior. Kia does a great job with interiors. I think other manufacturers could learn a lesson. Uh, the roof line swoops down in the back, so they did kind of some fun with the headliner to give you headroom. Out back, you pay the price, a little bit of a short uh, deck and uh, trunk lid, but it is deep and nicely finished with a big pass-through. Uh, Kia's done a nice job there. And another great thing to see is there's a space saver uh, spare. Always look what your car has. Uh, notice they... They save some money here without putting an engine cover on. This is the 1.6 turbo engine I told you about. It did the job well, although it was a little raucous at times, a little rough sounding, the exhaust note. I do love how that roof kind of goes right back into the fastback glass, and it's separated by a nice bit of chrome trim. All around, a very clean-looking car, and one that was pretty enjoyable to drive, I have to say. Now, we look at some of the numbers on this vehicle, uh, and they're also not bad. By the way, overall score, uh, five-star safety uh, hmm. score. So you you really can't get much better than that. It, it is uh, good news there. Uh, Eight-speed automatic transmission. That's what they all come with. It has what they call the Kia DriveWise driver assist technology for forward collision assist for pedestrian lane-keeping assist. Driver attention warning, leading vehicle departure alert. That's if you're sitting at a stoplight and not paying attention and that vehicle leaves, it will alert you like, hey, guess what? Really That's nice. Neat. It's actually really nice. It, it works really well. Uh, blind spot and rear cross traffic collision avoidance. This is great, especially if you're driving a sedan and it's you're a little bit lower than everybody else. Um because everyone else is driving an SUV, it's great to have. It really works well. They don't cheap out either on their screens. 10.25-inch touchscreen with Navi, Android Auto, and Apple CarPlay. Uh, I believe they were wired. I'd have to check that. I don't I don't remember. Exterior, LED reflector, uh, headlights with on-off, amber LED dry, daylight driving lights, uh, GT Line Sport Grill, 18-inch Sport Alloy Wheels. Then we uh, pop for uh, a few options, which was the GT Line All-Wheel Drive Premium Package, Panoramic Sunroof with Power Sunshade. You'd love those sunshades, Les. Uh, the LED Projection Headlights, Forward Collision Avoidance, Navi Smart Cruise Control, Curve with Stop and Go, Highway Driving Assist, LED Overhead Interior Lighting, Heated Steering Wheel. There you go. Cargo mat, carpeted floor mats as well. All so before the options, 27,690. And then with all the options, uh 30,285 and a very, very affordable by today's world, $995 freight. 
Uh, Lower than I thought. 31,280. Of course, this is made in West Point, Georgia. It's a plant that I have been to, um, and it is a neat plant. It has hardwood flooring on the <laughs> assembly line. Very Actually, mellow plate, ex- yeah, except where they're good. stamping the roof panels. <laughs> Boom, and the whole building comes down and shakes. I was yeah. like, wow, you would not want to get your hand caught in that. But once again, a vehicle oh. that I think some people don't think about. It's a sedan. It's all-wheel drive. Got a nice interior. Got all the features. Decent horsepower, decent mileage. Something to think about. SUV alternative, right? Well, you're right. And, you know, you, you need to drive these things to prove to yourself that you don't necessarily need an SUV. Yeah. Now, are even things like the K5 hard to come by at a dealer? I mean, these days? Or, <sighs> or are they Are they ordering them? Or, or do they order all SUVs? Uh, I think they're they're ordering just a a token number of sedans and the rest is SUVs. Well, you you look at the lineup. I have pricing here for the rest of the lineup. It starts with an LX front wheel drive at $23,790. And even their base models are well equipped when it comes to Kia. And um, then it goes all the way up uh, to $31,190. There's a GT, which is a little bit, uh, I believe that comes with the bigger engine. And then there's the GT line, which I drove, which is the GT, but with the smaller engine. And even the bigger engine does fairly well with uh, 24 city, um, 32 highway, 27 combined. So you're not giving up a heck of a lot uh, on mileage uh, with that. Uh, but a lot of standard features, of course, the great uh, warranty of Kia and uh, just a, a ton of standard features, nice interior. It's one to check out, the K5, uh, and I like the red seats. I really did. I thought they I thought they really made it pop. Yeah. As I yeah. said in that video, you can't really tell. It was a nice gray. It almost looks white just because it was a bright, sunny day. But uh, it is a, a cool color as well. So good job by the folks at Kia One to check out. Hey, don't forget, check us out at CruiseControlRadio.com. Like us on Facebook. Find us on our YouTube page as well. It's time for me to say I'm Fred Staub. I'm Les Jackson. We're going to see you down the road.